servant of the Lord's own servant, faithful shepherd of the sheep, Bishop Gregory, wisely nurtured all the church God's ways to keep. Writing, preaching, leading, loving, in St. Peter's steps he trod. Skilled musicians, monks and teachers, learned anew to worship God. In his writing still he shows us how to love and serve the Lord. Needed wisdom for the ages, through his words the Spirit poured. In an age of strife and famine, in the midst of plague and war, Holy Gregory kept the vision, he required nothing more. Now we raise our hearts and voices on this holy festive day. Challenged by the life of Gregory, boldly, humbly do we pray. To the Father, Son, and Spirit, God the Holy Three in One, with St. Gregory clothed in glory, let our work of praise be done. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. As we gather today, we celebrate St. Gregory the Great, and he was great. First of all, he's one of the four doctors of the church. There's Ambrose, St. Augustine, uh, St. Jerome, and then Gregory the Great. So those are the four doctors of the church that are outstanding, and that's the Latin church. The Eastern church also has outstanding doctors, but I'm not going to get into all of that. Gregory is known for Gregorian chant. So all of you lo Latin lovers who really enjoy the Gregorian chant, this is the guy who set it into motion. So, as we gather today, we take a moment and we ask for God's love and mercy to touch our hearts and to heal us of our sin. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. O God, who care for your people with gentleness, and rule them in love. Through the intercession of Pope St. Gregory, endow with a spirit of wisdom those to whom you have given authority to govern, that the nourishing, flourishing of your holy flock may become the eternal joy of the shepherds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, since we have this ministry through the mercy shown us, we are not discouraged. Rather, we have renounced shameful hidden things, not acting deceitfully or falsifying the word of God, but by the open declaration of the truth, we command ourselves to every one's conscience in the sight of God. For we do not preach ourselves, but Jesus Christ as Lord, and ourselves as your slaves for the sake of Jesus. For God who said, let light shine out of darkness, has shown in our hearts to bring to light the knowledge of the glory of God on the face of Jesus Christ. But we hold this treasure in earthen vessels, that the, un that the surpassing power may be of God and not from us. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Proclaim God. 
God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord, all you lands. Sing to the Lord, bless his name. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Announce the salvation day after day. Tell his glory among the nations. Among all peoples, his wondrous deeds. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Give to the Lord, you families of nations. Give to the Lord glory and praise. Give to the Lord the glory to his name. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Say among the nations, the Lord is king. He has made the world firm not to be moved. He governs the peoples with equity. Proclaim God's marvelous deeds to all the nations. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. I call you my friends, says the Lord, for I have made known to you all that the Father has told me. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. An argument broke out among the apostles about which of them should be regarded as the greatest. Jesus said to them, The kings of the Gentiles lord it over them, and those in authority over them are addressed as benefactors, but among you it shall not be so. Rather, let the greatest among you be as the youngest, and the leader as the servant. For who is greater? the one seated at table or the one who serves. It is not the one seated at table. I am among you as the one who serves. It is you who have stood by me in my trials and I confer a kingdom on you, just as my father has conferred one on me, that you may eat and drink at the table in my kingdom and you will sit on thrones judging the 12 tribes of Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. This Gospel always flies in the face of what we've been taught from little on up about how we need to live. It really does. Because if you think about society, this goes against everything about society. Society is always get the best job, get the greatest this, get the best this. I mean, that's what it, it does, I'm sorry. That's what is always promoted. And, you know, to rise up, you know, make sure that as you are climbing up, you get the best job, you know, as you're moving up. You know, and even sometimes as far back in grade school and high school, we're being prompted, you know, you want to get the best grades if you're going to go to the best schools and you're going to have to do all of this so that you get the best position because you don't want something less. And yet, that's what Jesus is asking his disciples to do. Not to get the best, but to be the less, the youngest. To be the servant. And you see, the idea of serving one another is always important 
that it's not about being on top, but it's being recognized that we're together, that we're a community, and working together as a community helps us grow together to make a difference in this world. I always find it interesting. Do you know why Catholic schools had uniforms? I'll tell you why. So that we were all uniformed. And the uniformed didn't mean, oh, look at your shoes and look at, look at the jeans or the shirts and all of the stuff that people are wearing. Yeah, they wanted us not to focus on that, but to focus on the education. And that's why we wore uniforms in Catholic schools. And you know something? Uniforms also bring about an attitude and it, it also brings about a behavior. I know, I've seen this. I've worked in Catholic schools. Every time we would relax the uniform, okay, now you could wear jeans, and a, there was a whole different attitude with the kids. Teachers, you can email me, you can call in, you can say, but it's the truth. It is the truth. You see, Jesus knew that. So he wanted us to be as one, to share in serving one another, to love one another, and not take on that attitude of who is greater, who is better, who is least. You know, I, growing up as a kid, I was not good with sports. In fact, I was pretty lousy with sports. And you know, the most difficult thing about growing up in a neighborhood with other kids who were good at sports, when they picked the team, guess who was last? You got it. And you know, that was not a nice feeling. Yeah, they take this one and that one and you'd go through taking the best people and then all of a sudden, yeah, well, you can have him. Folks, you see, Jesus knew this because this is part of who we are as human beings. You know, it just always amazes me. You can have a Cadillac and, oh, I want the better Cadillac. I want the newest, most greatest model of the Cadillac. It's like, no, you're not happy with just a Cadillac. No, it just seems to be that's the way we are. But Jesus is challenging us to really look at that. And you know what, folks, we need to look at that. Because when we start to put ourselves on par with different people, we don't always think the, the best of ourselves. And I know even uh, when I look back, I always would draw from that moment of being last and feeling that and not being really confident in myself. I was never confident in sports because of that. Because I always took on, well, no one wanted me on the team. I must be awful, so I am awful. But you know something, sometimes that's what happens in our own society. Well, I'm not good enough. I'm not smart enough. I'm not this or I'm not that. And we take that on. And unfortunately, Jesus says, no, I want you to take that on so you can share and be one with one another. So as we approach this gospel, I want you to think about that. I want you to think where you fall in that and how you judge and your values and all of that. Just reflect on that for a moment. And how does that affect you? How does it affect your attitude? Well, I don't want to be like those people on the south side. Or I don't want to live like those people on the north side that are all snooty. They all have money. Folks, we do that. I hear it. I mean, come on. Maybe even you know other examples. But I want you to really connect. Got it? And really find, where do you find yourself? Because with this challenge, we all can be servants to one another. As we gather, I'm going to pray for those kids who feel less than who they could be, maybe even adults who feel less than who they can be, that God has gifted them and God calls each of us to serve one another 
and to recognize that each and every one of us has great gifts and that we are all equal in God's eyes, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let us pray for those who are recovering from the hurricanes. And again, I want to uh, pray for those who are recovering from the fires in California and anywhere else where there may be difficulties due to storms and that uh, people have to get their lives back together, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And I want to pray for an end to this pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And I want to always keep the doctors, nurses, EMTs, firemen, truck drivers, teachers, all of you who are out on the front lines, that the Lord will keep you safe and healthy so that you and I will be served. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. I want to pray for our military men and women throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And I want to pray for peace throughout the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Loving God, as we celebrate Pope Gregory the Great, who was servant to the church, help us to serve one another the needs of those who are really important to us as we lift these prayers today and always. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread that we offer you, which earth has given and human hands have made. Let it become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine that we offer you, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. Let it become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray now, my brothers and sisters, that my offering and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant our supplication, O Lord, that this sacrifice we present in celebration of St. Gregory may be for our good, since through its offering you have lo loosened the offenses of all the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. Through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Gregory the Great. We bid your church rejoice. So too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life. You teach her by his words of preaching and you keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of the angels and the saints, we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it. And he gave it to his disciples and he said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, and he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Jerome, our Archbishop, and all the clergy and all of you, God's holy people. And we remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection. And we're going to remember today Victoria and Jerome Pelkowski and Naturzia Amorim. Bring them and all who have died into your mercy and welcome them into the light of your face. And have mercy on us all that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. And so we gather our hearts this day as we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, for the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to all of your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance to your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Let's turn to one another and offer each other a spiritual sign of peace. Peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring us to life everlasting. Amen. We hold a treasure not made of gold. In earthen vessels wealth untold, one treasure only, the Lord, the Christ. In earthen vessels 
Light has shone in our darkness. God has shone in our hearts with the light of the glory of Jesus the Lord. We hold a treasure not made of gold in earthen vessels wealth untold. One treasure only the Lord the Christ in earthen vessels. And let us pray. Through Christ the teacher, O Lord, instruct those you feed with Christ the living bread, that on the feast day of St. Gregory, they may learn your truth and express it in works of charity through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so we turn to the Blessed Mother and we pray for her intercession as we pray. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Our Lady of Chestahova, pray for us. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go forth in peace and love to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a great day, everybody. Hi, I'm Father Mark Payne, and I'm the pastor here at Blessed Sacrament. If you're enjoying these Masses on YouTube, would you hit the red button, subscribe? Because then you'll get those Masses all of the time. And we would love to have you, and we certainly want to continue these Masses. God bless you, and have a great day.